Over the past couple of months, we've analyzed workstation performance from a number of different angles. In April, we took a look at both Chaos Group's V-Ray and AMD's Radeon Pro Render. Soon after, a full suite of tests hit the same 12 GPUs for a good look at performance across the ecosystem. Following that content, requests from you guys led to even more performance content last week, when we took a look at Redshift's GPU renderer, Magix's Vegas video editor, and one of the best open source projects going, Blender. In this video, our workstation performance analysis continues with a look at viewport performance across 8 pieces of software that heavily rely upon the GPU for its acceleration. So, what's a viewport? In a 3D rendered nutshell, it's the big window where all the scene manipulation happens. The better suited the graphics solution, the better the acceleration of this continually rendered window. As always, if you want to analyze this data a little bit better, you can hit up the written version on the website and dig in at your leisure. With viewport performance, it's dangerous to assume that the graphics card you have your eye set on will work ideally with your workload if you haven't done any research. With gaming, it's generally safe to assume that a graphics card at a certain performance level is going to deliver similar results across a big selection of titles, but when do you remember a high-end gaming graphics card being great in only half of the games out there? The professional visualization market, or ProViz for short, is a lot different. AMD and Nvidia put lots of R&D dollars into their driver optimization, and both companies regularly work with the likes of Dassault, Autodesk, Siemens, and etc. to ultimately make sure nothing holds performance back on their respective graphics solutions. If you need proof that viewport performance matters, look no further than the fact that the folks at Spec GPC have created an entire benchmark suite with viewport performance as the sole performance measure. Production rendering is important, sure, but you can at least walk away from a PC while rendering is taking place. There's no alternative like that when you're forced to interact with a slow viewport. It's Spec's work that has made a video like this possible. With its recently launched Spec Viewport 13, viewport performance from 3DS Max, Maya, Siemens NX, Creo, Katia, and SolidWorks can be measured, as well as visualization tools for energy and medical scenarios. AMD and Nvidia are both Spec GPC members, so you as a consumer should trust Spec Viewport's reliability and accuracy. On the topic of accuracy, it's one of the reasons I like Spec so much. The organization sees things the same way we at TechAge do when it comes to wanting to deliver results people can trust. The company employs tracing techniques in each view set to make sure the end results are as accurate on one vendor as they are on the other. Here's a screenshot highlighting the consistency of the benchmark. On the top is the Radeon Pro WX7100, and on the bottom, the Quadro P6000. The C in spec must stand for consistency. Okay, it actually stands for corporation, but I like mine better. But enough about all that, it's time to tackle performance. The exact same collection of GPUs that was used for the past couple of benchmarking videos has been used again here, with drivers that are still completely up to date as of the time of this video's publishing. The scores in the graphs ahead represent the average after 3 runs. A major new feature of SpecView 13 is the ability to run the test at 4K resolution, so to cover even more ground, both that and 1080p results are included. But before moving on, it's important to note that these are scores, and not FPS results. They're the end result of SpecView Perf's algorithm pouring over the performance of individual test results, which of course are weighted differently. Ultimately, the better the score, the better the overall performance. Certification isn't the only thing you gain in SOLIDWORKS if you go the professional GPU route. Performance will see a major boost as well. Last fall, Nvidia released a workstation performance boosting driver for the Titan series, and while it made a huge difference at the time, the Titan XP still sits in the dust of the Quadro P6000. AMD's Radeon Pro WX7100 performs extremely well here, managing to place ahead of every Nvidia gaming card. But over on the green side, serious optimization work allows a lower end card like the Quadro P2000 to outperform both the high end RX Vega 64 and GTX 1080 Ti. While the Titan XP saw no real advantage in SOLIDWORKS over a typical GeForce, Katia shakes things up quite a bit, giving us our first real taste of the importance of understanding your workload. Here, the Titan XP doesn't just outperform the GTX 1080 Ti, it sits behind only the Quadro P6000. AMD also has some obvious optimizations in place for its Radeon Pro line, but the difference is not as stark as it is between GeForce and Quadro. That means that the faster the Radeon, the better. We can see that with the RX Vega 64 outperforming every other Radeon, even the product certified WX7100. A good friend of mine once purchased a workstation graphics card based on its price alone, assuming that a $2,000 option had to be better than a $600 one. Luckily for him, the workstation card offered enough performance to get him by, so no true harm was done. Now imagine that same scenario, but in the inverse. Someone purchases a gaming graphics card instead of a professional one for Siemens NX. 
They then instead get 18 frames per second at 1080p instead of 186 frames per second from a lower priced alternative. This is true for both AMD and Nvidia cards, with the WX7100 performing much better than the RX Vega 64. Nvidia rules the career roost, as even the Lobi Quadro P2000 beats out everything from AMD here. As the WX7100 performs better than the RX 580 by a very notable margin, I'd hazard a guess that the WX9100 would slide in between the P2000 and P4000, but since those cards cost much less, dedicated Creo users don't have a difficult choice to make here. Note that in order to generate these test results, a special driver had to be used for the RX and WX Polaris based graphics cards. Currently, the Enterprise driver cripples PTC Creo performance, but the latest Adrenaline version of the Radeon Pro driver works just fine. 3D Studio Max is the only test we use in Spec View Perf 13 that doesn't have a 4K option, hence the complete lack of an orange bar in this graph. With these results, we can see that driver optimization seemed to help NVIDIA GPUs, such as the P2000, which fares well against the WX7100 on the Radeon Pro side. Meanwhile, the RX Vega 64 performs almost identically to the P5000, which makes sense since their rated performance is similar. With Maya, we can see the same kind of scaling as we did with 3DS Max. Ultimately, NVIDIA's cards offer the best performance, it's just not a competition. That's two Autodesk applications that perform better on NVIDIA, but AutoCAD, which we also have performance for from previous testing, makes a third. Hopefully, we can see performance continue to improve with these tools on the AMD side as more driver releases hit us. Now for something a little different. The final two tests cater to visualization software researchers, doctors, and so on, used to interpret mass amounts of data gathered through many different techniques. The amount of data being churned through to generate accurate visualization on the screen is immense, especially since it doesn't give that impression just by looking at it. The medical test follows the 3DS Max and Maya ones nicely by scaling almost identically. Nvidia is on top, and once again sees its lower end quadros outperforming the entire AMD stack. Those we have on hand at least. The Quadro P4000 and Vega 64 perform similarly, with the Polaris based Radeons falling behind most of Nvidia. Thankfully, the energy results gives us something interesting to discuss before wrapping up. Here, AMD's RX Vega 64 dominates. The Titan XP's 12GB of memory seems to gain it a bit of an advantage at 4K, but overall, the Vega 64 performs exceptionally well in comparison. This video may have largely revolved around a single suite, but to call SpecView Perf 13 a single benchmark would be inaccurate. It's more of a framework for individual benchmarks. A tool like 3 d Mark might cater to the vast majority of PC gamers out there, but that kind of simplicity is non-existent on the ProViz side. We couldn't just run one test from SpecView Perf's collection and consider it to be good enough. That said, it wouldn't be fair to end a video like this by saying that one vendor is better than another, because that's entirely dependent on your workload. Ultimately, Nvidia gets the nod more often than not, a reality AMD is not ignorant of. But at the same time, AMD slays in certain tests, such as the final one in this performance look, for energy. I already hate myself for saying this so much, but it truly does pay to know your workload. In some cases, a gaming card might cripple your performance, while at the same time, going with an opposing vendor could cripple it just the same. This is one of the reasons I find the workstation market so fascinating, but I will say one thing. I'm extremely thankful that the gaming performance side of things isn't so sporadic. That all covered, we thank you again for watching this video and encourage you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's a lot more to come, so thanks again and see you again soon.